Welcome to our topic, Campus Audit. Our learning objectives are threefold. We'll begin with purpose. And the purpose of the audit is so that your campus can give an accounting to the district of the textbooks that the district is tracking. Next, let's talk about best practice. And best practice is to centralize your inventory in one location, if possible, and stack your books 5x5 five five or 10x10. Ten ten. This allows for a much quicker inventory count. Also remember, the goal of the audit is to only count what you can physically touch. Now I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we'll get started with some step-by-step -step instruction. Now that I'm logged into the TipWeb IM application, I want to start by showing you two ways you can locate the audit. The first is on the home screen of your application under the Alerts header. Note we have a new campus audit. Once we've begun working in that audit, it will move from new to in progress. And once we've submitted the audit to the district, it will list under submitted. There's another way you can locate the audit and that's in your navigation area under inventory. I'll go ahead and click on inventory and on the right of my page under the audits header, I can enter into the audit page by clicking on audit management. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my home page and we're going to enter in under the alerts area. I'll click on new campus audit which will bring us to the campus audit page. On this page the new audit will list under the blue grid header. It will list the audit name, the date the district created the audit, the date the district wants the audit completed, and if it's been submitted, a submitted date will populate. The status of the audit will also show. The statuses that you'll see on your screen during training today is new, and when I begin working in the audit, it will update to in progress, and when I submit the audit to the district, it will say submitted. We also have an edit icon. And this edit icon allows us to enter into the audit and begin working. Before I do that, I want to show you some very important reporting that you can use outside of the audit if you want to write down your counts. I'll go ahead and click on Campus Audit Worksheet. And it will open up a printable worksheet. Note at the top, it lists that it is the campus audit, the date it was printed, the status of the audit, which is now new, once it's been submitted, who submitted it, and the date it was submitted. On the far right, it will list the campus, the due date, and the date it was last modified or worked in. Under Notes, if the district leaves you any particular note, you're going to be able to see that. And if they used a particular material type, which I did for this audit, it will list. Beneath you're going to see the SLC if your district uses that coding, the name of the book, perhaps the counts if your district allows you to see how many you own. The audit count is where you can enter in your physical count and then you could calculate within this worksheet if you so choose. I'm going to go ahead and X out of this worksheet and next, let's go ahead and go into the audit by clicking on the edit icon. Clicking on the edit icon brings us into the edit campus audit page. Note the audit name will list, date created, any notes provided by your district along with the campus name and due date. Beneath, you'll find a search by area, so if you need to search for a particular ISBN, title, publisher, or SLC, you can do so by entering the search criteria and clicking on the binoculars. Let's look at the first blue grid header. And note beneath my header, you'll see various ISBNs listing, titles, SLC numbers, 
publishers and perhaps inventory counts if your district allows for you to see those counts. Our purpose is to make sure that we get each textbook listing beneath the first blue grid header to populate beneath the second. Let's go ahead and get started with some counts so we can see how this area works. I'll begin with my first count and I'm going to say that I did have 250 of this particular book. Once I've entered the count I'll come down and click on the Add Count icon, which removes that book from beneath the first blue grid header and puts it beneath the second. I'll go ahead and finish entering counts, and even if I don't have any of a particular book, I'm still going to need to indicate that in order to move that book beneath the second blue grid header. I'll go ahead and say I don't have any of this particular book, and click the Add Counts icon. On this particular book, let's say I'm short one. Perhaps I'm over one on the next book. And the last two books I balance. I'll go ahead and move these two books beneath the second blue grid header. Now that all books are populating beneath the second header, note that my Submit icon has turned orange so that I can submit and finish up this audit. But before I do that, a couple good tips. I would pull the report again and review my shortage and overages. I'll go ahead and click on the report. And when it opens, the calculations will populate. You can see on this book that I balanced. I'm not over or short on the first two books, but the next book I'm short one from what the district is expecting me to own. Now I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this reporting. And let's say I need to update one of my counts. I'm going to come down and edit Health Calculus, and let's say I discovered we did have one more book than the 150. I can click on Edit, and if I need to add one, I simply put a 1 and Save. This will update my count. If I decide I want to remove a book from beneath the second blue grid header, I simply click on the Delete icon, which moves the book back up to the top. Note though that I remove the ability to submit to the district until I fill in a count and again add the count beneath the second blue grid header. Now that I've reviewed my counts I'm ready to submit to the district. I'll go ahead and click on the submit icon and note that it's going to ask me to sign and submit agreeing that the signature and initials below will be the electronic representation of my signature for the purpose of submitting the audit. And by submitting this audit, I agree to all the counts provided by my campus. I'll go ahead and type my name, put my initials, sign and submit. Now that my audit is submitted, I can no longer edit. I can, however, continue to pull the reporting to review. I'll go ahead and back out of the audit page, take you back to the home page, and note under alerts that the audit has been submitted to the district. This concludes our topic, Campus Audit. We want to thank you for watching, and remember, you have unlimited support. Please find additional materials and videos on our Support Center.